yesterday, shall we address the fact that uh, Roman Abramovich has uh, given stewardship and care of Chelsea to charitable foundation trustees. Uh, we heard from the club today for the first time, the situation in Ukraine is horrific and devastating. Chelsea FC's thoughts are with everyone in Ukraine, everyone at the club is praying for peace. Uh, let's welcome in Gab Marcotti, uh, shall we? For a little bit more on the developing story of Chelsea's situation, Gab, let's, uh, let, let's try and address both of these situations together, shall we? Obviously, Abramovich coming out yesterday and giving up stewardship of the club. We talked about it with Jules. That is this just an empty gesture? Well, it's a public gesture. It's window dressing in practical terms. There's no such thing as stewardship. It's it's not it's not a legal term. It doesn't doesn't mean anything. He's still the owner. If if I own my car, if I and and I let you drive it, Dan, um, it's still my car. So from that perspective, uh, there have been suggestions that uh, some members of parliament here might freeze his assets. As you know, they've been going after uh, other Russian oligarchs in the UK. He's not on that list yet. Uh, and even if they freeze, even if they were to freeze it as an asset of his. It doesn't make much of a difference for him because it's not a liquid asset. It's not like he needs to, uh, he needs that money that, 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 that he needs to sell Chelsea to go and pay his bills. So um, I, I think this is just his way to try to make a public statement, to distance himself. The people, incidentally, the, the Chelsea Foundation members, which is a group that includes people like, uh, like Piara Power, the former head of Kick It Out, um, Emma Hayes, uh, the, uh, the, the Chelsea women's coach, people like that. Uh, this is a charitable foundation. This isn't. Uh, something that, that runs a football club, uh, it's not clear that, you know, they're going to necessarily accept. So um, I, I think this is purely a symbolic gesture. Uh, meanwhile, of course, we had Czech Republic, Sweden and Poland FAs all coming out and saying they would refuse to face Russia in those World Cup playoffs. Well, FIFA responded with a statement today saying no international competition shall be played on the territory of Russia with home matches being played on neutral territory and without spectators. The member association representing Russia shall participate in any competition under the name Football Union of Russia and not Russia. No flag or anthem of Russia will be used in matches where teams from the Football Union of Russia participate. Um, after that statement, we heard from the Poland FA saying FIFA's decision today is unacceptable to us. In the situation of war in Ukraine, we are not interested in the game of appearances. Our position remains unchanged. The national team Polish will not play against Russia in the playoff match, regardless of the name of the Russian team. What's FIFA thinking here, Gab? Because you're getting yourself into a situation where no one, is, no one wants to face Russia, no matter what the name is, no matter where it is, no matter what anthem you played before the match. They are point-blank refusing to take on this team why do FIFA not just kick them out of the competition? All right, so a couple of points to make here. First of all, um, these measures that you see, no anthem, no flag, and changing the name, uh, anybody who's watched the Olympics is familiar with this. And in that, that situation, Russia uh, banned for different reasons. In that case, it was doping, uh, but it's the same thing. So what FIFA have done, FIFA have said, these are preliminary measures. There are more measures to come, but for the time being, we're kind of just going to copy what the IOC did uh, in punishing Russia. Uh, going forward with this, uh, we speak of FIFA as if, you know, it, it, it's one guy, Johnny Infantino, in a house with pulling all the powerful levers. Um, that's not quite the case. Uh, they had a meeting of what they call the FIFA Bureau, which is the head of the six confederations from CONCACAF to South America to, to UEFA, uh, and they had to decide what to do. Uh, there was a feeling that the difficult thing here is there is no UN resolution condemning Ukraine, uh, as we've seen in the past. For example, in 1992, when uh, Yugoslavia uh, was, was effectively kicked out of the European Championships. Um, so they want to avoid coming, they want to avoid basically making a political decision, or they want rather the politicians like the UN to make that decision first. That's not going to happen uh, because Russia is a member of the Security Council and can veto any resolution. So effectively, they're buying time. Um, and this is my interpretation, but they want these other countries to come out and say, we're not going to play Russia. It's not just those three who they face in the playoffs. Uh, it's others. Uh, it's Wales. Um, the English FA also coming out with a strong uh, statement. There's others to follow. When there are enough members um, around the world willing to make this pledge, I think at that point, that's when you're going to see them um, take more serious action 
against, against Russia. The way they look at it is they still have uh, some time. It's, what, three weeks uh, and a little bit away. Uh, but they want to be careful to not take this action without the politicians, without the UN doing it first. And if it's not going to be the UN, then it has to be the FIFA members coming out and saying, no, this is what we want. What if they don't get that magic number, Gab? What if not enough federations, not enough members come out and make that statement against Russia? Where does that leave these playoffs? So, first of all, I think, I think they will. Um, I think they will quite clearly. Uh, they will. Um, I think at that point they're going to have to show courage and, and, and make a decision. Uh, ultimately, uh, the FIFA president is elected by his members. Um, today, we had the six confederation heads who are also elected by their members. And you could look at every one of them, from Victor Montagliani in CONCACAF to Alexander Cheffrin at UEFA, and saying, are you representing what your member nations want? Um, ultimately, these are the FIFA members. There's what? There's 211 of them, uh, something like that. And if a majority of them are happy for Russia to go ahead and play, uh, then I think FIFA is going to have a very, very difficult decision on their hands. But, but again, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think if enough countries come out with the sort of statements that, that, that Poland and, and Sweden and the Czechs came out with today, um, I think they can resolve this even without uh, what, what would normally happen, which is the UN coming out um, and, and, and announcing a boycott like we've had in the past with South Africa over apartheid or indeed with the, with the uh, former Yugoslavia uh, following the violence in the, uh, in the civil war uh, in the Balkans. Uh, well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.